Good morning. I welcome you all for this two days online workshop on Fuzzy Logic and Neural Network Approaches or Engineering Solutions. So these two techniques, Fuzzy Logic and Neural Network, is a subtopic of artificial intelligence. So this two-day workshop is divided into four sessions. Today we'll be having two sessions and tomorrow two sessions. In this morning session, we'll be seeing some of the basics of fuzzy logic approach. And in the afternoon session, we will be having a hands-on training, how to solve a problem, how to apply this problem in fuzzy logic technique and how to interpret these outputs that we are going to see in the MATLAB environment. So using MATLAB, we will be have, we'll be having a hands-on training session on Fuzzy Logic today afternoon. Tomorrow, in the morning session, we'll be having an introduction and basics about the artificial neural network. And subsequently, in that afternoon session, we'll be having a hands-on training on ANN, how to solve a problem, uh, how to predict the outputs using ANN in the MATLAB environment. And in the morning session, you are going to look into some of the basics and introduction about the fuzzy logic. So before going into fuzzy logic, first you should know what is mean by fuzzy. Then only we can understand something about this concept. A fuzzy is a term that is used in the negative manner. It is used in the negative manner. That is, a data which we are going to have it for analysis or interpretation lacks clarity. I'm having a data. It may be an output data or the data collected by some means. So from this data, I cannot clearly interpret things. And that kind of data is called as fuzzy. A data that lacks clarity is known as fuzzy. And with this introduction, I will move on to the further basics. So the idea of fuzzy logic was first proposed by Professor L.A. Zadak, who works for the University of California in 1965. So this technique is not a newer technique, so it is a old technique, but it has its fame now also because of the better outputs that we are going to obtain or we are going to reduce or eliminate the fuzziness in the data. So what is his idea of fuzzy? So he has proposed and what is his idea? So he, is, he has represented an incomplete state of knowledge. So a knowledge base, we have a knowledge base and we have a rule base. There are two bases we will be having. One is the knowledge base and the other one is the rule base. So based on this rule base, we are going to represent an incomplete set of knowledge. We are going to represent an incomplete, incomplete set of knowledge by using a fuzzy set. Fuzzy set in the fuzzy theory. So here the incomplete set of knowledge. The incomplete is nothing but the fuzziness in the data. If I am going to have a fuzzy in the data, then the data lacks clarity and obviously it is going to have some incomplete information or it is in the incomplete state. So that we are going to reduce. 
So the invention or the proposed physiologic technique was not recognized <coughs> until 1970s, 74, exactly nine years after his invention until Dr. Mamdani, who is the professor at London University, applied the concept of fuzzy logic in a practical application. So, Mamdani applied this fuzzy logic technique in a practical application. The application is in controlling the automatic steam engine. Controlling the automatic steam engine. Okay, so there are many theories that we will be using behind fuzzy logic and most of them will be using this Mamdani's theory only. What are the various theories that is associated with this fuzzy logic? We will see in the latter stage of this presentation. So, this fuzzy logic control is the approximate reasoning methodology. Here we are going to give some reasoning. The approximate reasoning methodology proposed which exploits the formal models of common sense reasoning. So, we are going to have an approximate reasoning methodology based on the reasoning of common sense. We are going to quantify things. Instead of expressions, we are going to quantify things in a better way. So, that is the main thing of this. So many applications of this fuzzy logics are normally used in automation techniques and it are very very simple control algorithms as that of the conventional algorithms of PID. PID stands for proportional integral derivative. So this PID will normally use in mechatronics approach. We will normally use in mechatronics approach that is specifically for automation purposes. So these PID controllers are conventional controllers whereas it is now being replaced by the fuzzy logic controllers but at the same time these fuzzy logic controllers are as simple as these PID controllers even in the domestic washing machines nowadays we are going to use uses this artificial intelligence function that is the fuzzy interference systems So, in most of the experimental or most of the data we have, non linearities and the exceptions are included. Okay, in any things, we have some non linearities and also there will be some exceptions that are really difficult to realize with the conventional controllers of PA. In conventional controllers, the uncertainty will not take care of, will not take care of even though if there is. The non linearities. But in the case of this fuzzy logic, we are also going to consider okay, this non linearity. So, this fuzzy logic is specifically used by approximating reasoning at large. So, this fuzzy logic is a top, subtopic of artificial intelligence because we are going to frame some rules and based on that rules only this fuzzy logic is going to convert the crisp value into a fuzzy so that is I am going to convert the crisp value into some sort of good data. Okay, so for this it is going to use some approximate reasoning in a larger scale. So, the fuzzy logic idea is not as much as the humans because it is similar to that of the human beings feelings and inference process. When going to study a particular process, as a human we will having some inferences as well as some feelings. So, that thing we are going to incorporate in the fuzzy logic technique. So, these two are similar in nature. So, normally 
the classical control the classical control are nothing but the conventional controls the classical controls are nothing but the conventional controls or point to point control whereas this fuzzy logic or range to point control or range to range control so these things we will see in the latter stage what is by range to range and what is by point to point once for example i am going to divide the values between zeros to one so i am going to set a point so 0 to 3 point 3 is medium or small point 3 to point 6 is medium and point 6 to 1 is large but what happens when my reading is in between is point 3 2 it is closer to both the small as well as the medium so that is a range so that is a range in the case of fuzzy logic okay it is a range to range control but in the case of classical control it is a point to point control so how to obtain the outputs from the fuzzy controller so the outputs are normally derived by falsifying the inputs as well as the outputs so falsification of the considered inputs and the outputs were carried out and finally we have to defalsify it so the initial stage is falsifying the inputs and outputs by using some membership functions by using some membership functions and finally we have to defalsify the output so that exact or precise outputs can be obtained based on the rules that we have formulated a crisp input we will call it as a crisp input that is an element is either a member or the set or not for example in the previous lecture we are told a point to point control i am going to divide the values in between 0 to 1 into three categories 0 to point 3 is small, 0.3 to 0.6 is medium, and 0.6 to 1 is large. So if I'm going to have a value of 3.2, then it is a crisp input because it is lies in the medium value, but it is closer to the small value. So this is this is a crisp input, an element that is neither of the set or the not. So it is the set of medium, but since it is going to be closer to low or small it is not a set of low so that becomes a range so this fuzzy works on the range to range control so this crisp input will be converted to different members of the associated membership functions based on its value so based on the value that we are going to select this crisp input will be converted into different members based on the selected membership function so what type of membership function that we are going to choose will decide the outputs there are many membership functions like triangular trapezoidal gaussian generalizable sigmoidal so there are many but what type of membership functions that we are going to select that decides the how this crisp input is converted into different members of that membership functions so from the previous points that we have seen it is concluded that the output of the fuzzy logic mainly depends on the type of membership function that we are going to select okay type of the membership functions that we are going to select So these fuzzy logic and fuzzy ideas are most often used on daily life. Daily life we are going to see, but no one is going to pay attention. For example, I am going to a hotel. Okay, after having my dinner or meals, I am going to provide some tips to the server. So how we are going to provide the tips? If I am satisfied with the 
performance of the server, I'm going to give more tick. If I am not satisfied, I'm going to provide a lower tick. So these types of things are just fuzzy in nature because we are not going to quantify how much we are going to get satisfied. At the 75 percentage, I am satisfied. Or 20 percentage, I am satisfied. So that quantification we are not going to provide, but in simple statements, satisfied or not satisfied. So these things are normally we are going to have in our routine life, but we are not going to pay attention to that. So in certain surveys also, for example, I am going to attend a meeting and there will be provided some feedback forms. In this, we are going to have whether you are satisfied or not. But if it is some scale, then the crisp output is converted into a fuzzy like output. In some scales, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. It is not, it is not fuzzy. If it is given that good, bad, satisfied, not satisfied. So how we are going to quantify that? So that's the issue. So to answer some questions in certain surveys, most of the time we will be given only two questions. Not satisfied, quite satisfied. But what is the quantification term, the quantification value that we are going to provide for this? Because these questions are ambiguous in nature because whatever things that we are going to give it's a ambiguous it is not being getting quantified so exactly to what degree you are satisfied or you are dissatisfied with some of the service provided or the product that we are going to use okay that we are not going to express but this quantification of things is very very essential But these type of vague answers will be provided only by the humans and these vague answers will not be accepted by the machines. The machines understand only values between 0 to 1. Okay, the machines understand the values between 0 to 1. So computers can easily understand only 0 or 1, that 0 is maybe low or high, or 1 may be low, high or low. If I'm going to consider 0 as low, then 1 will be high. If I'm going to consider 0 as high, and 1 will be low. So these two values, only the computers can understand. So these type of data are called as crisp data or classical data that can be processed by all machines because that lies in between zeros to one. So these data are the crisp data. So these types of crisp data will be processed by the machines, but the machines won't process the vague answers just like how satisfied, quite satisfied or not satisfied. Okay, good, bad, Likewise, because it is not going to quantify things. So by using this fuzzy logic approach, we are going to map the input space to an output space. Okay, in a convenient manner, in a convenient manner. So the purpose of the fuzzy logic is to map or to relate the input space to the output space in a convenient manner so that quantification of things is possible and also the fuzziness in this data that is lagging clarity in the data will be reduced or it may be eliminated. So what is meant by mapping? And what is meant by relating the input to the output space? Okay, here we will see some examples related to that. So you tell me how good your service is, and I will tell you what the tip. 
whether I am satisfied, not satisfied, partially satisfied, somewhat satisfied, likewise. If I am fully satisfied, give some 100 rupees, for example. If I am not satisfied, don't give any tip. If I am satisfied to 75 percentage, quite satisfied, then give him 60 rupees. So likewise, we are going to map or relate the input. The input share is the how good your surface. That input will be related to the output. The output share is the tip. The second example, you can have a photography. So how much far the object is from the camera? So depending upon that only, we will have the focus length. The focal length has to be changed. So yes, better example for fuzzy, we can provide it from this camera itself. While focusing, we will have some blurred image. Initially, we will have the blurred image. And finally, we will have a exact image. Okay. That blurred image are called as fuzzy images. That blurred images or blurred object is known as the fuzzy. So it lacks clarity. Once the exact focal length of the lens is obtained, then a clear object will be seen. And that is my fuzzy logic. That is the output, fuzzy output. Okay. So this is how we are going to relate the input space to the output space. A relationship that exists between the input and the output. So definition of fuzzy. Okay. How we are going to define this fuzzy? It is not clear. The data that is not clear, distinct or precise or blurred. Okay. Then what is the fuzzy logic? Here we will have a term that is called as boolean. The boolean is nothing but zeros and ones. The zero and one is called as the boolean's values. So this fuzzy logic is a superset of this conventional logic, this boolean logic. And that is extended to handle the concept of partial truth or truth. It may be partial true or fully true or the values that exist between completely false and completely true. The completely false may be zero and the completely true may be one. So it is the superset that is these values lies in between these zeros to one. So that is the concept of this fuzzy logic. So this fuzzy logic is a form of many valued logic in which the truth values of variable may be any real number that may be between 0 to 1. As in the case of booleans, we will have values either 0 or 1, either zeros or 1. But in the case of fuzzy logic, there lies a value in between these two values. Either it may be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.9 or somewhere, or 0.21 or 0.11. So it ranges in between these two extreme values of zeros and ones. So these values are the many valid logic, that is the truth values of variables. That from which we are going to quantify things. We are going to quantify things exactly. How satisfied? 0.6 I am satisfied. So one may be 100. So 0.6 satisfied based on some criteria. Just like that we cannot provide. For this only this rule base will come into, into use. 0.6 or 0.3. Okay, the truth values of variables that lies in between zeros to 1. So that is very, very important in the case of fuzzy logic. So this fuzzy logic or has two different meanings. In the narrow sense, it is the extension of multi-valued logic. Multi-value, the values that lies between zeros to 1, it is a logical system at the same time. And second, so this, in the wider sense, is a synonymous with the theory of fuzzy sets. 
The fuzzy sets relates the objects that has unsharp boundaries or the boundaries are not sharp. Okay, as in the case we have seen an example. 0 to 0.3 small, 0 0.32, 0 0.6 medium. Then what happens to 0 0.32? In our example, it lies in the medium, but we don't have any sharp edges. Okay, that it has the unsharp edges. So that we are going to make it as sharp so that the exact things that we are going to infer from, infer from that based on the rules that we are going to have and the type of membership function we are going to select. So in the wider sense, it uses the theory of fuzzy sets where the class of objects with unsharp boundaries is converted into sharp boundaries by means of these membership functions. So that is the two different types of defining the, the logic. So why fuzzy? So what is the, the need of this fuzzy? The term that we are going to call it from this fuzzy logic is the term is a concrete, immediate and descriptive. That is the fuzzy term that we are going to use in this approach, the fuzzy logic, that fuzzy. But normally fuzzy is lacking in clarity, which is a negative term. Normally fuzzy is a negative term. So the peoples in the West were repelled by usage of this word fuzzy because fuzzy is a negative word because we are going to represent things in a negative manner. A data that lacks clarity is fuzzy, but that same word is being used here so that a concrete, a descriptive data can be obtained. A negative thing is kept as the name of this logic so that a concrete and a descriptive data can be obtained. Then why logic? So what is the fuzzy we have seen? Then why logic? So the fuzziness rests on the fuzzy set theory and the logic is nothing but a small part of the theory. Since we are going to consider the fuzzy set theory and we are going to consider only a part of that, we are going to have it as a logic. We are going to use the logics that we are going to use it in the fuzzy set theory. That's why we have got going to call it as a fuzzy logic approach. So here we will have an exa uh, example, so here we are going to see an image, a bait is going to fall on a man, consider a industry scenario, someone is lifting a weight and unfortunately some persons are going to come under the bait, the person has seen that and he is going to shout in a precise manner. A 1500 kilo mass of weight is approaching your head at 45.3 meter per second. Okay, whether this is correct or just a word lookout, which is correct. The first picture is the exact one because it, the weight of the object is 1500 kilos and the speed with which it is approaching also it is given. But whether the person who is underneath the weight can understand in a faster manner. No, it is the precise way of telling things or representing things. But in the significance, what we are going to do is just look above, or look out. So as the person looks that there is a weight that is going to fall down, it simply moves away. So that is the difference between a precision and significance. So here we can have how we are going to map it. So here we have an input space and we are going to have the output space. The input space consists of the quality of the service rendered. Okay, and the output space is the amount that we are going to provide it as a tip. 
okay, what we are going to have? The black box. The black box concept, that I doesn't know. So I am satisfied. How much satisfied? That is not our given. I am satisfied, so I am going to give him 100. But how much you are satisfied? So that should be quantified. So for this purpose only, we are going with this fuzzy logic approach. How fuzzy works? So based on the assumptions, based on the assumptions, the fuzzy logic works on the concept of deciding the outputs. So purely the fuzzy logic works on the assumptions and based on them, it decides the outputs. This fuzzy logic works on the basis of sets, the fuzzy sets, the fuzzy sets in fuzzy theory. So each set represents some linguistic variable defining the possible state of the output. So these linguistic variables, you say later on what it is. So each possible state of the input and the degrees of change of the state are part of the set. So what is the present state of the input and by changing it, what is the present state of the output? Okay. So these things depend upon which the output is predicted. Okay. So each possible state, state of the input and degrees of change of the state are part of the fuzzy sets. And it depends upon how the output is predicted. So this, this is mainly influenced by the type of membership function that we are going to select and how many rules that we are going to formulate. That we are done, we'll see in the preceding slides. So normally, these fuzzy sets or fuzzy logics works on some rules. So the rule base. So we have two types of bases. One is the knowledge base and the other one is the rule base. So it normally works on the principle of is, else, then. That is, if A and B have some common thing, then I will go with Z. For example, if A is small and B is also small, then Z will be small. So that is my case. Or if A is small and B is medium, obviously Z may be small or Z may be medium, depending upon the input mapping the input space and the output space. So how you are going to map the input space with the output space? That decides the value of Z and also rules that we are going to frame. So for this purpose only we are going to have some assumptions. So this fuzzy works similar to humans. Similar to humans because in routine life or day to day life, we are going to express things that are related with fuzzy. So humans base their decisions on conditions. So what, in, what is happening at the present state? So based on that, the conditions will be, based on that, decisions will be evolved. What is the present state of the COVID-19? So based on that, the decision will be taken whether to relax the lockdown or to extend the lockdown. So based on the conditions, we are going to take some decisions. So here we are going to have an example. We are going to control the temperature of a room. So air conditioner we are going to have. Okay. My present room temperature is 32 degrees centigrade. I want to reduce the temperature to 24 degrees centigrade. Okay. For this, I am going to have three commands. Heat, cool or no change. So in this case, heat is not required. Okay. We have to cool or no change. So I am going to set a target temperature, 24. My present room temperature is 32. Okay. So now based on the fuzzy logic systems, this will automatically run the compressor 
the system will automatically run the compressor until it reaches 24. Once it reaches the 24 degree centigrade, automatically the compressor will switch off. Once there is a difference in temperature, automatically the compressor will start working so that the 24 degree centigrade will be maintained in the room. Okay. So if it is too hot, start the fan. Okay. If it is too cool, set the fan speed to low. If I want to decrease the temperature, then I can stop the fan. If I want to increase the temperature, then set the temp fan to high. So these are the some of the decisions that we are going to take. Okay. Or if it is too hot, start the fan so that the temperature will be reduced. If I want to decrease the temperature from 32 to 24, set the spin to high. Okay, if it is presently running at 100 rpm, then change it to 300 rpm if there is, in order to decrease the temperature. If it is too cold, then I have to set the fan to low. Okay, too cold. If I want to increase the temperature from 24 to 32, if I want to increase, then stop the fan. So, too cold means start the fan. If I want to increase the temperature, then stop the fan. So, depending upon these conditions, the fuzzy logic will have an rule base, will have a rule base and these things will be automatically taken care of. So, here we will have an input and we will have an output. So, what is taking place in between these two things? So, the measurement or assessment of system conditions, whether we have to control the temperature or we are going to control the speed of an engine or the speed of an motor. So, that is my input. The processing. So, we are going to determine action based on the if-then rules. Okay, based on the if-then rules, we are going to take the decisions and then we are based on that we are going to arrive a decision and based on that the output will be provided. I have a input. Based on that I want some output. Okay, so the decision upon this change in input will be taken care by the if-then rules that is being formulated on which the decisions will be taken. And finally, we are going to have a crisp control signal or decision. A crisp decision will be carried out. So, here we are going to have a air conditioning system example. So, three things I am going to consider. Okay, my input is my temperature. So, I see this is represented by means of three colors. So, 10 to 20, it will be cold and 20 to 30, it will be hot. But the temperature that exists between 18 to 22 is not. So, it is a subset of both cold and hot. It is a subset of both hot and cold. That is the normal. So, based on this, I am going to have some output. So, how much power that I am going to provide it to the cooler? or compressor so that the set temperature can be reached. It's too hot, give more power to the cooler. Look at the red rectangle so that high power will be delivered or provided to the cooler so that it works faster so that the temperature tends to reduce. So that the temperature tends to reduce. If it is cold, give less power to the cooler. Now the set temperature is reached. Now I want to provide only a lower power. So 
so that may be between 155 to 165 but if the temperature is normal if the temperature is normal don't change too much of powers so i have to maintain a power that between the lower value of high power and the higher value of low power that is between 140 to 190 if i am going to maintain this normal power after some time then the normal room temperature will be around 24 degrees centigrade that is i am not going to give more power to the compressor or low power to the compressor instead i am going to provide a nominal power to the compressor so that the set room temperature will be maintained so this is obtained by means of this physiologic approach so the first thing that we are going to have in the physiologic is scaling the crisp input that we are going to have it may be as part of the set or not it may be a part of the set or not that is the crisp a value that may be a part of the subset or not is a crisp so the input may be a crisp input for which we are going to have a scaling factor over that then comes the falsification then comes the falsification that is the input to the fuzzy logic then comes the fuzzy rules based on the rules we will be having some decisions and a crisp and a output will be provided and then the output will be provided and that output should be defalsified that should be defalsified so that a crisp output will be provided the first thing that what we are going to do is the scaling the scaling is nothing but converting the inputs the values of inputs in between zeros to one the other name for scaling is normalizing the other scale value uh, name for scaling is normalizing that is converting all the values in between zeros to one so that only we are going to provide it to the system because the system understands only the values of zeros to one or the values that between zeros to one that's why we are going for this normalizing process that's why we are going for this normalizing process and based on upon this we are going to provide some membership functions some membership functions and then subsequently we are going to write some rules and I am going to make some decisions. I am going to have some outputs. I am going to have some outputs. Then that should be defalsified. Defalsified. And finally, the values that we are going to obtain by from the fuzzy logic will be denormalized. Okay. Because the output of the fuzzy logic will also be in between zeros to one. The output of the fuzzy logic will also be between zeros to one that zeros to one should once again be denormalized so that the crisp output will be obtained for example if i'm going to consider a cutting force the values may be around 300 to 80 so 80 will be the lower length and 300 will be upper length so that is the normal normal values of a cutting force for an example just an example so if I'm going to give that as an input, then these should be normalized, that is scaling. The 80 will be taken as 0 and 320 will be taken as 1. So all the remaining values will be quantified in between zeros to 1. Then we have to select the membership function. Then I have to write the rules. Okay. And then we have to defalsify that. Defalsify that so that i will be having some outputs the fuzziness will be reduced that is the defalsification that we will see later on then the output will also be between zeros to one so that converting these values of zeros to one to the real values of cutting force between 80 to 320 is called as the denormalizing stage so this is how this fuzzy logic is implemented 
Now, how this fuzzy varies from the classical set or the conventional set? Normally, in the conventional system, as an expert system, we have a physical device, the knowledge model. So, the precise values will get changed depending upon the knowledge level. But in the case of this fuzzy system, we have a precise value that is provided to the fuzzifier. So, the justifier will convert that into some values that is a crisp output. There is a crisp output so that precise value will be given to the physical device. For example, in the case of conventional system, the physical device may be a heater. The physical device may be a heater. Switch on the heater when the temperature is around 20 degrees centigrade. That is when the temperature reaches 20 degrees centigrade, then switch it on. When the temperature reaches 30 degrees centigrade, switch the heater off. So that is the thing. So switch on when it is 20 degree, switch off when it is 30 degree. But in the case of fuzzy system, we can have any values that in, in between that so that I can maintain that temperature. I can maintain that temperature. So set the temperature as 22 degrees centigrade so that the temperature will be maintained. No switching off and switching off. The system will be on so that the temperature will be maintained based on the if then rules that we are going to form. So that is the first distinction between conventional or classical set or between fuzzy. So compared with the conventional classic set, the fuzzy set allows the members to have a smooth boundaries. It allows the members to have a smooth boundaries. So in other words, these fuzzy sets allows a member, these members are nothing but the membership functions. To belong to a set to some partial degree, to set partial degree. What is these terms? Here you can see. So from this you can easily identify, okay, what is a smooth boundary? What is a rigid boundary or unsure boundaries? So as in the case of classical set, Look at the image on the left side. We have the example for classical set. So here I'm going to have a temperature 0 to 120 degree Fahrenheit. From 0 to 30 degree Fahrenheit, we consider it as low. From 30 to 70, we'll consider it as medium. And 70 to 120, we consider it as high. But in the case of fuzzy set, it has a sharp boundaries. Okay, and the members belong to a set of some partial degree. That is, it also forms the medium and also it also forms the higher values of lower and the lower values of high cutting. Now look at the second picture, fuzzy set. Here, it is represented by means of a bell-shaped curve. It is represented by means of a bell-shaped curve. The dotted lines are the classical sets, low, medium, and high. That is replaced, that is, these rectangles are replaced with this bell shaped curve. Look at the first bell shaped curve. It goes beyond zero, so the values will be minus. But at the same time, it has some values on the lower side of the medium. It has the values on the some lower sides of medium. Consider that medium membership function. It takes the medium values and apart from that, it also considers some higher value of lower category, higher values of lower category, for example, 10, 20. Okay. And also some lower values of higher considerations. Consider this high category, high membership function. It takes some lower values of, or sorry, higher values of medium. And also, it is extended beyond 120. See the boundaries they are, I'm going to make it as a short boundaries. For example, 
Sensor at 25 degree temperature, degree Fahrenheit, a temperature of 25 degree Fahrenheit. In the case of classical set, it lies in the low, 25 degree Fahrenheit, it lies in the low. But here in this first set, we are going to consider it as low and also in the medium, and also in the medium. So based on the rules, these decisions will be taken out. Based on the input values and the rules formulated, the crisp output will be decided. So this first set allows a member to be a set to some partial degrees. Okay. So in the case of this classical, I am going to consider three classical sets, one is low, medium and high. So the boundaries are clustered clear, the boundaries are clustered clear, here you can see the boundaries are set by rectangles, so it is crystal clear, 30, above 30 it is medium, up to 30 it is low, so the boundaries are clustered clear. But in the fuzzy sets, these boundaries are very very smooth. It is very very smooth and it spreads in between the higher values of the lower membership function and the lower values of the higher membership function. So one temperature can be categorized into two or maybe even three subsets simultaneously. So subsets, 25 is a subset of both the low and the medium. So because it lies in between the low and the medium. So it is a subset. So the temperature 40 in the classical set, the 40 lies in the medium. Okay. It may also be up to 0.5 degrees to the low. So it may belong to low to a certain degree and also it it will it is in the medium to about 0.7 degree so 40 degree so here in this example you can see the first is set 40 degree in the classical set it is medium okay but in the first is set if it is 40 it is a subset of both the low and the medium that is the inter intersection it is a subset of both low and medium 40 is 0.5 degrees a 50 percentage it is in the lower and 70 percentage it is in the medium that what it is saying but at the same time 50 degree it is a subset of both medium and high it is a subset of both medium and high so once again i will go back to that so 50 50 is the middle point of medium so the degree is 1, that is 100 percentage, 100 percentage, but 0.2 percentage it is in the high, 0.2 percentage it is in the high as it is the subset of both medium and high. So these kinds of sharp boundaries are provided by means of this sets. So what are the logical values that normally we use in Boolean and fuzzy logic? In Boolean, we will consider only zeros and ones. We consider only zeros and ones. So zero is white or one may be black. Okay. But in the multivalued logic, it varies between zeros to one. So zero is white in this case, in fuzzy, in this example, we consider 0 as white and 1 as black. Okay. So any values that lies in between 0 to 1 is called as multi-value logic. Here we will have two examples. One. In the Boolean logic, if I am going to ask an, a question, is it cold? Yes, that is this, take the value of 1. If it, is it cold? No, then it takes the value of 0. Okay, but in the case of fuzzy logic, is it cold? 
very much then i am going to consider it as 0.9 that is this value lies in between 0 to 1 is it called little then i am going to consider as 0.25 is it called very less then it is 0.1 so these values were maintained in between 0 to 1 the next example that we are going to see is the height of different persons the height of different persons face mark john have some heights okay until peter so peter is going to have the lowest height of 122 centimeter and chris is going to have an height of 208 centimeter in the case of bullion the crisp after certain range above 180 it is taken as one it is in the higher side and below 180 it is taken as the lowest side that is zero so from this we can identify 152 is also equal to 170 which is not acceptable because we are going to consider the crisp output as zero for 179 172 until 152 even though there is a difference of 27 centimeters in between peter and david we are going to have the same consideration but in the case of fuzzy the highest height is taken as one and the lowest height is taken as zero so according to the difference based on the rules and fuzzy logic we are going to quantify the height in between zeros to one so that is the we are going to convert the fuzziness in the data to a crisp out the fuzziness in the data or the lack in clarity of the data will be converted the fuzzy set operations fuzzy set operations so the various categories of fuzzy set operations or intersections union and complement <coughs> so this is what union intersection and then complement so union is combining for example in the previous example we have seen low medium and high in this i am going to consider only the two membership functions medium and high so combining the medium and high we are going to consider the whole thing the whole values okay the intersection is the intersection part between these two membership functions that is the medium membership function and the high membership function it is the first set integration or intersection so the values that lies in between the values that lies in between with the intersector values then complement so the complement is we are going to have the values we are going to have these values which are going to be in the reverse stage in the reversed conditions so for the union for the union we are going to have a a union b so it is the maximum of these two membership functions mu a is one for membership function and mu b is my membership function and the intersections that is the minimum so minimum of these two and the complement is nothing but a complement c that is here we are going to have the complement so the first is set union selects the maximum member selects the maximum number whereas the intersection operation selects the minimum number right the complement defines the collection of all elements in the universe that does not reside in the set a so it is the reverse of that right so which are not residing in a which are not residing in a so that is the reverse conditions it may not be max or something it is the just the reverse conditions the sets that this does not reside in a because we are going to consider this as a complement a power c if it is b then a b power c so linguistic variables 
these linguistic variables allow us to interpret some linguistic expressions in terms of fuzzy mathematical quantities and then translates these linguistic terms into fuzzy. How cold is today? How hot is today? How hot? Very hot. How cold? Very cold. So these are all called as the linguistic terms. Okay. So these linguistic variables allow us to interpret the expressions that we are going to provide in a linguistic manner in terms of some fuzzy mathematical quantities and then translates these into some fuzzy sets. So these linguistic terms are composed of two parts. The first one is the fuzzy predicate such as young, smart, small, tall and low. So these are all linguistic expressions. So these are all linguistic expressions. Then modifiers or hedges. This we call it as modifiers or hedges. That's a likely, unlikely, extremely, likewise. So hedges are interpreted as a composition that exists between the given function. The function is nothing but the membership functions. The, the function of the input, the input functions and the basic membership functions. The basic membership functions may be a triangular function, a trapezoidal function, a Gaussian function or a bell shaped function. So during uh, our uh, hands on training, we can see what are the different functions and how to define these different functions also. So these edges are interpreted as a compo composition between a given input function because each and every thing so we are going to consider this as a model. We are going to consider this as a model in terms of some functions. That's why we call it as a input functions and between the basic membership functions that we have selected. The room is hot. So that is my linguistic value. How much it is hot? That is linguistic variable. So this expression, the room is hot is an expression. So that is the linguistic value. value. So that I am going to convert into a linguistic variable. How much? How much? 80 percentage it is hot. 10 percentage it is hot. So this linguistic values is being converted into a linguistic variable. So determining a fuzzy model. So before going into a fuzzy model, we should know the prior knowledge about the system or the process. If I am going to represent a process by means of fuzzy, then a clear understanding or a clear knowledge how this process works should be is very very essential. So a fuzzy model can be obtained by using a prior knowledge about the systems that is being provided by the designers or the operators. So once you know a exact, exactly how your process works, then only we can implement this fuzzy logic. Just like that, we cannot go with that. You will end up with wrong outputs. Because once I know a higher knowledge in that process, then only I will be able to write the rules. So that is the knowledge base. So the prior knowledge about the system, knowledge base. And based on that knowledge base only, we are going to write the rules. That is rule base. So knowledge base, rule base. That's very, very essential in this. <clears throat> so how to acquire knowledge? It depends upon the persons. It varies between persons to person, and also it is a time consuming process. Once I want to know a process, how a solar cell works, then I have to spend some time with that. Then only I can understand the working of that. So a perceived model can be obtained by using available measurements and using identification models. Okay. So from the available measurements, that is the values and the identification methods, we can obtain a fuzzy model. Example, the clustering methods to find the parameters. 
So what are the parameters that can affect a process that can be determined? And also the terms that defines the rules, which is very, very essential. For example, consider a solar cell. I am going to coat it with some material. The thickness of coating will improve the band gap. The thickness of the material that I am going to coat will have a band gap. So, I should have a prior knowledge upon what are the various methods uh, that can be used for coating, what are the different materials that can be coated, what should be the thickness of coating, Okay, what should be the strength of that coating. And all these things I should have a prior knowledge. Okay, so that should be taken with the available measurements and using some identification models. For example, the clustering methods that can be used to determine the parameters. And then we can write the rules. So these fuzzy methods will provide good results and can be interpreted in a linguistic way. So that the final models can be evaluated and validated. The cluster methods that we are going to have for identifications, okay, will provide good results and be interpreted in a linguistic way. So how much the linguistic variables or linguistic values so that the final model that we are going to develop will be evaluated and validated in a perfect manner. So this is a first set. So this is a trapezoidal function. So five ranges of or five membership functions I am going to select. The type of membership function is trapezoidal. Here five membership functions I have selected. The first membership function is very low. The second one is low and third one is medium. Fourth one is high and the fifth one is very high. That varies between Temperature T1 and T2. So, these very low, low and all these things are representing the linguistic concepts. And the values that are associated with this are the linguistic variable. The values that are associated with that, the range of values that we are going to select it for the membership functions. It will define the states of variable fuzzy variables. So, the membership functions, we are going to provide it as a linguistic concept or value and the values that is associated with this are the linguistic variables. So, fuzzy control system. So, here we will come across three different types. One is the fuzzifier. Then fuzzy inter inferences or interferences, and then the defuzzifier. So the fuzzy control system consists of three things. The first one is the fuzzifier. So this fuzzifier transforms the measure or the input variables in numerical forms into linguistic variables. 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 6, likewise. I am going to transform the input variables into some linguistic variables. So a controller, then comes the controller. The controller consists of both the knowledge base and the inference engine. So this knowledge base consists of the membership functions and the fuzzy rules. So knowledge base consists of both the membership function and the fuzzy rule. The membership functions we can select according to our requirement. Now, according to the preciseness that I require. Okay. So, by using this controller, I am going to perform some approximate reasoning. Approximate reasoning based how on how the humans will interpret something. Based on how humans interpret some things. Okay. So, this is the controller which consists the knowledge base and the inference engine. The knowledge base, we are going to have the membership functions and then rules. So based upon that, we are going to have the inferences. Then comes the defalsifier. 
So this converts the fuzzy output. The fuzzy output will be in between zeros to one. The fuzzy outputs will be in between zeros to one, and that fuzzy should be converted into the required output. Will be converted into the required output by means of this defuzzifier. So this is a flow chart that shows how this works. So the input. The scaling factors and normalization that we are going to do, that is, we have to convert that inputs into some values in between zeros to one. Then we have the classifications, the rule base, and the knowledge base. The knowledge base consists of this classification and the inference engine. Then afterwards, we have the defalsification. After defalsification, we have to perform the denormalizing. That is converting the fuzzy outputs into the crisp output. That is, we are going to obtain the outputs. So, what is fuzzification? So, this fuzzification is the operation that translates, that transforms the crisp data input, the crisp data input into some membership function. So, this is also called as the alpha level. So, the inputs will be. <coughs> The inputs will be translated into some membership functions. So that is falsification. So in order to carry out this, initially the input values should be normalized. Should be normalized to meet the range of universe of disclose. That is x. That is in between zeros to one. So first the input should be normalized in between zeros to one. So the degree of membership mainly depends on the shape of membership function. So the membership degree mainly depends on shape of the membership function used, whether we are going to use triangular membership function or trapezoidal membership function or Gaussian membership function or generalized bell or sigmoidal likewise. We have many types of membership functions. So what type of membership function that we are going to use will decide the membership degree. So there are two commonly used methods to evaluate the membership functions. The one is memory oriented approach and the second one is the computational oriented approach. So there are two approaches. One is memory oriented and the other one is the computation oriented approaches. So in the memory oriented approaches, these membership functions do not change at runtime. During running these membership functions, or we are going to evaluate, or we are going to convert the fuzziness in the data to a crisp output, these membership functions do not change. And the total number of inputs and the membership functions are limited. The total number of inputs and the membership functions are limited in nature. So the alpha values. The alpha values are nothing but the classifiers. Or here you can see the alpha values are nothing but the membership degrees or evaluated offline and stored in the memory as discrete values. Since this does not change with respect to the runtime, these alpha values, that is membership degree, are evaluated offline and stored. So the membership degree is nothing but this alpha values which are evaluated offline and these values will depend upon the shape of the membership function selected for this analysis. Whereas in the second type, the computation oriented approaches, the evaluation of membership degree, that is the alpha value, the alpha value is made online. Right? So we have to store the membership functions and this evaluation is made online as the membership functions changes with respect to time. That is the values of the membership functions changes with respect to the runtime. The first inference system, FIS, we call it as the FIS, first inference system, that is the controller. So these fuzzy inferences uses the rule base. So how you are going to frame the rule and the alpha value. The alpha value is nothing but the membership degrees. 
to deduce the fuzzy output. So the fuzzy output mainly depends upon the rules that is framed and the membership degree. The membership degree is a function of the selected membership function. So the output decide will be decided by the rules frame and the type of membership function selected for our analysis. So the fuzzy inference system involves two steps. The first one is finding the output of each rule. We will be writing some rules. For each rule, what is my output? And finally, we are going to aggregate the individual rule outputs so that the overall system output can be generated. From the individual, we are going to develop the overall system output. So the first inference is made up of two steps, finding the output for each rule and then aggregating the individual rule outputs so that the overall system output can be determined. So the algorithm of fuzzy logic controller, FLC or FIS, FIS stands for fuzzy inference system or fuzzy logic controller, both are one and the same. So on based on three paradigms, we are going to consider this algorithm of FLC. First one, the under operation. The, the under operation between the antecedents of the rules, that is the two rules, that is if and then and also we can use if then rules and and operations that we can use. That is logic operations, and get or get likewise. So and or, the or operator between the individual rules. So the under operations between the rules, then the R operator between the individual rules. The fuzzy implication is interpreted as an add operation. The under or under add. So based on three these three paradigms, the algorithm of FLC is purely constructed. So for and we are going to have minimum. We are going to have minimum. For R, we are going to consider the max. And for add, we are going to consider the minimum. So by incorporating these three, we are going to call this as a min-max system. Because for and operator and for add, we are going to consider the minimum of the values. Whereas for R, we are going to consider the maximum. So this will be useful when we are going to write the rules for the fuzzy inference system. So another common method in order to interpret these operators is to use multiplicative operation. Okay, that is and or and add everything we are going to use. And or or and add. In, in conjunctions, we are going to use this, and that becomes the max dot method. Okay, if I am going to consider individually, then it becomes the min max methods. Okay, if I am going to use multiplicative operations, then we consider it as a max dot method. Then we have what are the various methods or models that we have in the fuzzy inference system. So this is very, very essential in selecting the best model. So Mamdani, Mamdani used the fuzzy logic approach proposed by Zadak in the year 1974 and he has applied it for the automatic steam engine. So the method that is proposed by Mamdani is called as Mamdani strategy. So this employs both the maximum method and the max dot method. So from which we can have a valid conclusions. Okay. It uses both the max min and the max dot method. That's why we are going to have a better output in these cases. Then comes the Larson strategy. Then comes the Larson strategy. So this is based on product operator inference. So this losses fuzzy reasoning model is based on the product terms. Then comes the 
Sukamoto's strategy. So this is based on simplification of Madamsis method. Since all the membership functions are monotopic in nature. So uh, that is, he has considered or he has simplified the concepts of Mamdali's method and then he has used as his strategy. Then comes the TSK strategy. Takai Sugno's Kang strategy or this is also called as Takai Sugno strategy. TSK or TS strategy. So normally we will be using these two strategies. Mamdali strategy and Sugno strategy. We generally call it as a Sugno strategy. That only the MATLAB will be added. So this reasoning method is based on distinct model description. So the model we are going to model the control variables that are characterized by the functions of the process states. So the control variables we are going to characterize by the process state variables, that is by the input variables. So how you are going to model the inputs? So based on that, the control variables will be characterized. Then comes the defalsification. Defalsification converts or translates the fuzzy output into a crisp output. Translate the fuzzy output into a crisp output. Then I have to perform the denormalization process so that I will have the exact value. The most commonly used methods for defalsification are the center of gravity method, the mean of maximization method, COG, MOM, and HH, the height method. The center of gravity, the mean of maximum, and the height method. So what this two will take? The COG methods defines the defalsified value of a subset as its fuzzy centroid. So it takes the centroid values by determining this. See mu i a is the membership functions. Mu y j is the membership functions. Then comes the MOM function. So it determines the defalsified value as mean of all values of the universe of discourse. The discourse is nothing but 0 to 1, the x. x is varies between 0 to 1. So mean of all values, it determines the defalsified value as a mean of all values. So the formula that is associated with this is this. And where t is the set of elements which can attain the maximum value of the membership function. So the T is the set of elements which can provide the maximum value of the membership function. Then comes the height method. The MOI method is the mean of maximum method and HM is the height method. It is based on the center of gravity of each rule. So weighted by the matching levels of each rule which is given by this formula. So mu i is the membership functions and the FI is the center of gravity of each output membership because it uses the center of gravity of each row. So fuzzy logic representation. How to represent this fuzzy logics in general? So each problem must be represented in terms of fuzzy sets. So here slowest I can consider 0 to 0.025. Then slow 0.25 to 0.5, fast 0.5 to 0.75, and fastest 0.75 to 1. Or I can here I have gone for four categories: slowest, slow, fast, and fast. So based on this, I have to select the membership functions. You can see here the values will be changed from zeros to one. So now always the values should be between 0 to 1 or we can take values lower than 0 during these membership functions for better describing the outputs or the inputs. <coughs> so this is the explanation for that. If speed is greater than 0 and the speed is less than 2, 5, then the speed is lowest. This is the if-then rule. 
based on the values that we have selected for the membership functions we are going to frame the rules for slow else if if the speed is greater than or equal to 0.5 and speed is less than 0.5 then consider the speed as slow so this is the inputs that we are going to provide so fuzzy logic membership functions so here we are going to see four fuzzy logic membership functions <clears throat> the first one is the triangular membership function second one is the trapezoidal membership function third one is the gaussian and the fourth one is the generalized bell so the triangle x 20 60 80 we call it as a b c a is the lowest value consider the triangle x 20 60 80 20 is the lowest value and 80 is the highest value and 60 is the median the third vertex okay that is the height 60 then trapezoidal x 10 20 60 90 5 the lowest will be 10 and the highest will be 95 and 20 that core lies that core lies exactly at 20 to 60 okay then comes the gaussian gaussian we have x 20 50 where C, 20 is my center that is so 20 is my width actually the 20 is my width and 50 is my center so exactly at the 50 we can see the center and 20 is the width in the case of bell shaped curve we are going to have the shapes of the curve that are represented by the four okay and the 20 is the width 20 is the width and the center is 50 20 is the width and 50 is the center and 4 is the shape of the curve so when 4 is minus 4 then the reverse bell shaped curve in the negative direction can be produced so this is how we are going to define the membership function of an output in both these conditions they are considered the trapezoidal membership function okay trapezoidal membership function so in the input you can see in the trapezoidal membership function the low membership function varies from 20 to 40 the middle or the median varies from 30 to 80 so here we can have an intersection also here we can have an intersection so we are going to have a sharp boundaries so the degree with which the value 35 lies okay that is a subset of or the intersection of both the low and mid and also we can have the core we can have the core that is maximum of the low values similarly for the output the motor speed we are going to have the membership function on one second it is a trapezoidal membership functions so here also you can see the intersection that exists between slow and medium and medium and fast and all these things so a perfect output can be obtained by selecting this different membership functions then comes the mapping rules we have to frame some rules we have to frame some rules so how you are going to map the input with the output that is done by means of these rules the foundation for these rules is the fuzzy graph the fuzzy graph relates the fuzzy input and the fuzzy outputs so it is a fuzzy graph or we call it as the rules editors it is a graph that relates the fuzzy input and the fuzzy outputs so what is the combination of input and what is the corresponding output so that relationship is what is the fuzzy graph in real applications it is very very tough to arrive at decision on some relationship that exists between the input and the output it is very very hard or a complicated relationship exists between some of the inputs and some of the outputs during the development of this mapping 
So this can be eliminated by using this fuzzy graph. So whenever there is a hard relationship or we cannot, we find it hard to model a relationship between the inputs and the outputs or when a complicated relationship exists between an input and output, then these fuzzy mapping rules or the fuzzy graphs provides a solution. So how these fuzzy mapping rules work? So these work in a similar way to human intuition or insights. How a human preserve, perceives things. How a human is going to look at different things. So the entire function will be approximated by a set of fuzzy mapping rules. So here we are going to frame many rules for an input towards an output and the entire function should be approximated by the fuzzy mapping rules. Okay. So consider an example of air conditioner. So I am going to frame a first fuzzy rule. If the temperature is low, then the heater motor should be rotated fast. My set temperature is 30 degree. I want to heat a room. But now my room temperature is 20 degree. That is very low. Then the heater motor should be rotated fast so that the temperature increases. So this is a rule. So here you can consider a table which has some rule, rows and columns. The rows and columns are two inputs the temperature input T and the change of rate of temperature input T dot. So these are related by means of if then rules. For example, in the first category, so low, low, fast. If the temperature T is low and if the change of rate of change of temperature input is also low, then the heater has to rotate, the heater motor has to rotate in a fast manner. Okay, if the temperature is medium, that is T is medium and T dot, the rate of change of temperature input is low, then the heater motor can be rotated in a medium. Okay, they consider the second column, low, T for T low and for T dot high. If the temperature is low and the change of rate of temperature is high, then the heater motor can be rotated in a medium so that the desired temperature can be obtained. So a mapping. So these are the mapping rules. The first mapping rules are based on these things. So the control output based on the table, the control output is the heater motor. How speed it has to rotate? Okay, based on the two inputs, temperature and change in rate of input temperature. So when the current is low, that is when T is low, and also when T dot is low, then the heater motor should speed should be fast. Now go to this. So here you can have the T is low and T dot is also low then the heater motor should rotate fast. So that is what it is given here. In fuzzy expert system, these linguistic variables are used in fuzzy rules. Okay, these linguistic variables can also be used in fuzzy rules. For example, if wind is strong, then sailing is good. So this is a linguistic variables. Okay. If project duration is high, long, then completion risk is at high. My project duration, that is I have to complete the project in three months, but I am going to predict my project cannot be done in three months as it takes six months to complete, then the completion risk is high within three months. If speed is slow, then stopping distance is short. I am traveling in a car at a 20 km per hour, then the stopping distance will be short. 
Okay. So the procedure that we normally follow in the fuzzy logic. Step one: define the control objectives and criteria. Consider questions like what we are going to control. What is my objective? To maintain the temperature inside a room. To maintain the temperature inside the room. For this, we have to ask some questions. What we are trying to control? The temperature. What has to be done to control the system? The heater motor has to be varied. The speed of the heater motor should be varied. What kind of response is needed? The temperature. The room temperature. What are the possible system failure modes? What are the possible system failure modes? For example, the temperature sensor, the heater coil. So these are the possible system failure modes. So each and everything we have to consider. Step two, determine the input and output relationship, the mapping, how the input and outputs are mapped. So determine the least number of variables for inputs to the fuzzy logic system. How many least number of variables we are going to consider? And step three is break down the control problem into if then rules. If and then rules. They normally we call it as the if then rules. If more than one variable we are going to consider, then we have to go with if and then rules. If temperature is low, then increase the heat requirement. That is one. That is if then rule. If temperature is low and the rate of change of temperature is also low, then increase the heater speed, heater motor speed. That is if then and also if and then rules. If one variable, I am going to use if then rule. If more than one parameter, then I am going to write if and then rules. So these if and then rules should define the desired system output. So my ultimate aim is the desired output. For this, the prior knowledge about the system and about the process should be known. So that's why we have seen previously the prior knowledge to the system is very, very essential. So based on that prior knowledge only, we can write these rules. Step 4. Create the fuzzy logic membership function. Create the fuzzy logic membership function and step 5 after developing the or creating the fuzzy logic membership function program everything into the fuzzy logic system that is formulate these if then rules and then form the input and output mapping finally test the system finally test the system and then we have to evaluate the results and make necessary adjustment that is very very essential in the first rule itself we cannot have a desired outputs and based upon our desired outputs necessary adjustments can be made kindly note, take note of this necessary adjustment the adjustment is nothing but redefining the rules redefining these rules so that a desired output can be obtained so what are all the advantages of this fuzzy logic. So developing a fuzzy logic controller is cheaper than that of a classical or a conventional controller. Okay. And also the performance will be comparably, comparatively higher than that of the conventional controller. So these fuzzy logic controller are more robust than the conventional PID controllers. Because using this fuzzy logic controller, I can cover a wider operating conditions. I can cover a wider operating convention. Then these fuzzy logic controllers are customizable according to the need of the peoples. Okay, according to our requirement, I can customize it. So that is the 
advantage of going with fuzzy logic. Even though this has some advantages over the conventional methods, there are also some limitations or disadvantages. So these programs, the fuzzy logic programs are not useful when it is larger or smaller than the historical data. When the programs are much larger or smaller than that of the historical data or the data that is previously existing, it is not useful. Because even the conventional method will produce the same results. These fuzzy logics require larger number of data, then only a perfect if then rules can be formulated. Based on that, only the if then rules can be formulated. So it requires more number of data for formulating the rules. The estimators or the persons who is going to perform this logical functions should be familiar with the historically developed programs. And then only you can evaluate this fuzzy logic. So that is the limitations of going with this fuzzy logic approach. So with this, we come to the end of the presentation section. And now we will see an example how we are going to formulate that. And in the afternoon session, we will work out this problem in the MATLAB environment. So here, we are going to consider four inputs. A cutting speed, feed rate, depth of cut, and approach angle. And for each and everything, we are going to have some inputs. Okay. So for example, in the cutting speed, I am going to consider three sets of values. 227, 256, and 285. And similarly, for the other parameters also, I am going to consider three different values. For this, I am going to consider nine experimental. Based on various combinations, I am going to carry out nine different experimental runs. So this experiment is based on some optimization method. For this experimental combination, I am going to perform experiments in a machine and then I am going to determine the wear of the cutting tool, the roughness of the machined part and then the material removed during the machining process for a minute. For a minute. The wear of the cutting tool, the roughness of the machined surface and then how much amount of material is removed per minute that we are going to determine. Okay. Based upon this, we are going to analyze the data and then I am going to have a final term, a gray relational coefficient that we are going to have and the subsequent I am going to have a gray relational grade. The gray relational grade that I have obtained here does not produce a good result because there is fuzziness in the input data or the data obtained. The flank wear data, the surface roughness data and the material removal data that I had obtained does not provide a meaningful result to me. So this gray relational coefficient that I am going to obtain from the research, from the experiment, I am going to provide it as an input to the fuzzy logic system. So my input to the system is these values of 0 0.492, 0 0.383 likewise for the flank pair and roughness and MRR. And I am going to improve the gray relational grade. So my input to the fuzzy system will be these three gray relation coefficients. Flank pair, roughness and MRR. And my output will be, the fuzzy output will be another gray relational grade. That we call it as fuzzy gray relational grade. Based on my experiment, I have obtained a fuzzy, sorry, gray relational grade. And by inputting, this flank here, roughness and MRR, I will be having a output of the fuzzy that is termed as fuzzy gray reasoning grade. Now I am going to compare finally the gray relational grade with that of the fuzzy gray relational grade 
and how much improvement that i have obtained and how much improvement that i have obtained and whether it is possible to infer infer that output data that i am going to determine and how we are going to run so until now we have not used to fuzzy so before fuzzy we are going to analyze some data and we are going to have a data that is in the normal state okay the number of input variables is 3 flag pair roughness and mrr and all these values lies in between 0 to 1 that is the scaling the first step is scaling that is normalizing so all this flag pair roughness so all this flag pair roughness and mrr are converted in between 0 to 1 that only i am going to provide it as the input now here we are going for the mapping process the flag pair the surface roughness and mrr we are going to take it as input and then the gray relational grade i am going to consider it as the output and here i am going to use the mamdani model we are going to use the mamdani model for which consists the min max and min dot approach which consists the min max and min not min dot approach so this is your flag pair the membership functions that i am going to use in this is the triangular membership function that i am going to use in the triangle it has the lower vertex the initial lower vertex and the highest lower higher thing and the vertex so that i am going to define so the membership function that i have developed here is a consider here is the triangular membership function so for the output for the output i am going to consider the triangular membership function but five different membership functions whereas in the input the flag pair i am going to consider only three so i will tell what happens if i am going to consider five membership functions in input okay that also i will tell while going with the hands on training but now i am going to consider three membership function one is low then medium and then high for output i am going to consider five different membership functions and that also triangular membership functions that is minus 0.25 0.25 so the it is considered as very low so then 0.25 0.5 so this and all these things we can formulate so how you can define different the membership functions in whatever manner we want so here you can see normally these membership functions can be or the values has to be varied between zeros to one in fuzzy logic but here you can see it is taken as minus 0.25 and in the fifth serial number we can, can take 1.25 so that is exceeding the range of zeros and ones that is we are making it as a short boundaries okay we are not going to make a crisp boundary we are going to make it as a sharp boundaries that is minus 25 to 1.25 we are going to consider so that the boundaries become short so based on this i am going to formulate the rules and this is known as rule editor and this is known as rule editor here on the top we can see the three input parameters we have selected that is flag pair surface roughness and the mrr and on the right the blue shades it is the output so on the top we have seeing some values the flag pair 0.492 surface roughness 0.7 and the mrr 0.365 so this is the input to this fuzzy inference system that i am going to provide and these values are taken from the this values the first experimental trial values okay 0.492 0.7 and my output is 0.609 0.609 now based on the rules this fuzzy system or fuzzy logic system as provided as a value of 0.617 that is 0.008 it has improved 
right the vagueness in the gray relation grade has been improved by this okay similarly we have to give the inputs for the other eight conditions also so how we are going to have 27 rules we have three inputs here the flank wear surface roughness and the material removal rate for each flank wear i am going to consider three membership function low medium and then high similarly for surface roughness low medium and high for material removal rate low medium and high for each input parameter i am going to consider three membership function so there is three input and three membership function so three into three three into three is nine into three okay so three for flank wear into three for surface roughness into three for material removal rate so three into three nine into three is equal to 27 rules so here you can see that 27 rules is formulated when we consider five membership function for each input five membership function for flank wear five membership function for surface toughness and five membership function for material removal rate then five into five into five 122 rules we have to write we have to write that 125 rules then a precise a precise fuzzy gray reasoning grade can be obtained that will be very good than that is so based on the rules 27 rules we are formulated we are going to produce some surfaces we are going to develop some surfaces and this is the output that we are obtaining in the matlab so here in the first one we can see the gray relational grade that is the fuzzy gray relational grade okay what are the different values of fuzzy gray relational grade for the input flank wear and surface toughness in the middle for the relationship that exists between flank wear mrr and the fuzzy gray relation grade and in the third one the relationship that exists between the surface toughness mrr and the gray relation grade that we can identify okay in the first one when the flank wear is zero and the surface toughness is also zero then the gray relational grade will be zero but when the flank wear is one and when the surface toughness is one then the fuzzy reasoning grade will be one so if from the different colors or the structure of the surface we can also predict the fuzzy gray relational grade that corresponds to a particular value of flank wear and for a particular value of the softness so from the experiment we have determined some gray relation grade from the experiment we have determined some gray relation grade or we have some output from the fuzzy logic approach we have obtained some outputs we have obtained some outputs so this difference we are going to calculate and how much percentage 100 percentage we are going to make it as a 100 percentage so how much percentage there is improvement so here you can see and the improvement of a maximum improvement in trial number 7 18.82 can be obtained there is no minus value here you can see there is no minus value if you are going to obtain some minus value that is consider trial number 2 the gray relation the experimental gray relation grade is 0 0.401 in the first gray relation grade we obtained 0 0.432 434 instead of that 0 0.434 if i'm going to have 0 0.397 0 0.397 then the first grade is getting lower than that of the experimental gray relation grade so that rule correspond to that has to be changed so alterations has to be made so that a higher gray relational grade has to be obtained so only if you have a prior knowledge of that process only if you know the prior process of that knowledge then a clear and precise rules can be framed 
So once we are going to have this, then interpretations can be made from this. So here you can see in comparison of that, then interpretations can be made. So this is an optimization problem. So we are going to optimize how much we have improved, then interpretations and all these things we can make use of this. So this is how you are going to perform an fuzzy logic approach in a MATLAB environment for a given example. So with this, we can stop this presentation and this presentation is focused on some of the methods or some of the basics of fuzzy logic approach and what are the different types of membership functions that we are going to have and how each and every membership functions can be given in the MATLAB environment and how many membership functions that we can have and all these things we have seen here and how each and everything that is fuzzifier, fuzzy inference system and defuzzifier as work that we have seen here and we have concluded this part with an example okay while coming in the afternoon we will have a hands-on training in a MATLAB environment for the same problem we can define in that we will change the different membership functions and also different rules we can frame okay so that how this will have an implication on the output that also we can study so with this i conclude this session and exactly at two o'clock we will start the hands-on training so until then thank you if you have any doubts you can come to the chat section because when more than one person is asking doubt the audio will be getting blocked so come to the chat section i will provide you with the clarifications for your questions and thank you